So let's talk about the Geminids. First of all, um, what are they? Uh, Geminids are um, streams of uh, small particles, maybe dust, uh, leftovers from a comet. Usually what happens, a comet uh, is in orbit around the uh, sun and it leaves a stream behind it of dust or small meteoroids. And um, uh, meteor showers are common occurrences every year. At the same time each year, the Earth intersects with the stream. And um, small particles hit the upper atmosphere and burn up, say, 50 to 80 miles up in the atmosphere. And they produce um, trails of um, light in the sky, which is what we call meteors. And we've, and we've heard about the Leonids and the Perseids and the Geminids. Is this, compared to the others, how does this particular nighttime show rate? Uh, at the moment, the Geminids is the best shower of the year. It's the richest of the year. So for a uh, casual observer or, or uh, a serious observer, uh, they like to see more meteors uh, in the sky with this shower. Um, there's been uh, years, in, maybe 10 years ago, the Leonids was, was the, the richest shower. It went through. Uh, some of the streams are clumpy. So every now and then when the Earth hits the stream, there's enhanced activity, but the Leonids have, have, have died off a bit. And now the Geminids, um, with perhaps 50 to 80 meters an hour from, a, from a, a reasonable site, the Geminids is the best one of the year. 50 to 80 per hour, that sounds pretty good. It sounds like uh, that's like um, shooting fish in a barrel. We should all be able to see something if we're looking in the right place, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you're guaranteed to see uh, one a minute at least. Uh, uh, assuming the sky is clear, obviously. There's no moon this year. That, that's a very... Um, the moon is new um, today, so there'll be no moonlight to, to wash out the, sm the, the, the uh, fainter meteors. So that's a, um, this year has been pretty bad for, for meteor observers with the moon interfering in, in a lot of cases, but the Geminids are moon-free. So there's every reason to get out there. Um, the only difficulty, not difficult, but the, the, it's, it's going to be very cold. Uh, December night's obviously very cold for the Northern Hemisphere. So you have wrap up warm and um, make sure you stay warm, otherwise you, you won't be uh, very, uh, you lose concentration. So that's one thing to be important is to, to keep warm. Stay warm and stay focused. Which part of the sky should we be looking at and when? Um, it's, it's the constellation of Gemini, um, the twins. So there's two bright stars, Castor and Pollux, which is um, to the north uh, east of Orion. Uh, so if you look, that's where the radiant, uh, that's where they all appear to emanate from. Uh, so the radiant, the Gemini radiant, is uh, in, high enough in the, in the east um, when the sky gets dark. Uh, it, it culminates, or at its best, from the UK at least uh, about 1 a.m. Um, the the uh, activity is supposed to be it's it's high to 7 p.m. from the UK, so about midnight from the east coast of the United States. So um, if, as long as you look at, at towards um, the constellation of Gemini, um, you, the best thing to do is look about 50 degrees 50 degrees high and perhaps 30 degrees either side of the radiant. Don't actually stare directly at the radiant. The radiant is uh, a few degrees north of Castor which is the fainter of the two stars, the more northerly of the two stars, uh, which, which are the main stars, the twins in, in Gemini. So look, uh, the radiant is slightly to the north of Castor, but if you look to about 30 degrees either side, if you hold your fist out at arm's length, the width of the fist is about 10 degrees. So 50 degrees up, which is, which is the equivalent of the pole star altitude uh, from the UK, and say 30 degrees either side, and then you should, uh, that give you the best opportunity to, to see the meters. So you, you mentioned the peak times in the UK. In, in the continental US, uh, it sounds like the peak will occur before nightfall. Is that right? No, no. The peak um, is uh, around about midnight oh. for, for the United States. So, so by that time, the, the, the um, Gemini, Gemini will be quite well up. So it, it's quite a favorable peak for the, for the UK and not too bad for the, for, uh, the US either. And so happy a good night pretty much we're from, from all the way from uh, Europe all the way into the US. Um, and... You don't need um, a lot of fancy optics, do you? No, no, it's just the naked eye. Um, often it's good if you're observing groups, um, it, you have a bit more fun. You, and if you, if you want, you can just look for fun, maybe an hour, two hours. Take, to always take a break, say have a hot drink with you. Um, don't just stare for hours and hours on end because you, you'll never, you'll, you'll lose concentration. So you, you, a serious observer might do two hours, then take a break relax um, and then go back to it. 
you can, if you want, try and take notes of, of um, if you see a bright meter. The Geminids are, are quite good because they're, they're quite, um, as meteoroids go, they're quite substantial because they're, they're debris from an asteroid rather than a comet. So they tend to be slower, a bit more resilient, and so they can be very bright. So there's a good chance of seeing some bright events. And if you see those, you can actually track them, uh, perhaps um, try and take a note of their magnitude. Um, so there's all, there, there are uh, serious observers can make uh, a good difference to, to science, or you can just observe the fun. And uh, so binoculars really aren't going to help you. It'll probably make no. it harder to see. Absolutely. Uh, is it possible with, you know, consumer level gear to get any sort of images, movies, stills or otherwise? And yeah, you, uh, movie camera, uh, just, just point the camera. Uh, even, even, even stills, you, you can just open the shutter for five seconds or maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a minute. Um, you have to be careful that the, the lens doesn't, doesn't fog up in the cold weather. But um, sure, uh, people have obtained... Uh, Good images of, of the uh, of the of a meteor, Geminid or whatever uh, meteor before, and you can also get um, uh, movies as well, which are very, especially if there's bright events, that they're very spectacular. Uh, help us understand. Uh, there, there's something magical about being out in the night sky and seeing a meteor uh, streaking across the sky. What is it about it, you think, that that captivates us? I think it just reminds you of the the wonder of of the night sky. Uh, most of the time the stars are unchanging, the galaxies are unchanging, obviously the planets uh, come and go, get brighter, get fainter, but a meteor is something, it shows that the, the solar system in, in, in active, as an active place, uh, and it's just, just a wondrous thing to see, to see uh, 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 a fireball. Uh, it's possible that there might be the odd fireball, which um, could be as bright or brighter than Venus. If it, if it, if it gets to magnitude minus five, it's classed as a fireball. Uh, some years ago, I think it was the uh, Geminids, there was, there was uh, enhanced activity and there was, there was lots of fireballs and that was a wonderful night. Uh, it's, it's unlikely we see anything of that nature, but um, the Geminids are well known for, for a high proportion of bright events. It, it's just a, it just shows that the solar system uh, in, in, in action, really. And it's, for me, it's a reminder that um, Earth, our home, lives in kind of a dangerous neighborhood. There's a lot of, a lot of rocks out there that could clonk us. Yeah, indeed. Um, meteor, uh, if, if a meteoroid makes it through the atmosphere and hits the Earth, that, that's a meteorite, and there's plenty of some examples of those that have been found. It's unlikely your, uh, this will happen this time. But, uh, and then in the bigger picture with, with the near-Earth asteroids and, and the comets, there's, there's very faint possibility, but it's happened before to Earth where we've been hit. Um, the Tunguska event in the early uh, early 20th century. Uh, so there's always a possibility that, that one might have our name on it, but um, let, let's hope we've got uh, many years uh, ahead of us. Well, uh, if you're skeptical about all that, just go ask a dinosaur about it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Mark Armstrong with AstronomyNow.com, Astronomy Now magazine, who is the I'm going to give you an upgrade. You're the chairman of the night sky, chairman and chief executive officer of the night sky, as well as consultant. Thank you very much, Miles. I'll take it. All right. Take care. Thank you. Happy viewing.